Hello and welcome everybody. This is going to be another edition of the Daily Dharma. I definitely appreciate everybody tuning in. I hope that you get a message that is meaningful, helps you on your journey. My name's Dina. If you are new and don't know me yet, I like to do things differently every time just about. And today, I think what we're going to do is go straight into some code cards and then see where we lead from there. On the desk, we have Synergy popping out sideways on the ground, Crown Chakra number seven, and popping out of the deck here, we have Communication with Remembrance. Interesting. All right, so we are in Mercury retrograde, so there might be some type of helpful advice or clue in some type of way, form, fashion, whatever you want to call it, that is coming to mind right now that may either help you or help another individual to make it through some type of troubling time. This could be like sharing memories. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to approach this, but um, allowance underneath. Yeah, so I feel like this is a message about allowing the spirit or the divinity or the messages to speak through you in a whole new way. And so personally, this for us, we're uh, having a bit of a, a service a send off for a person that has died. And one of the suggestions was for family members to bring in either a story or something to say or share. And not everybody's as comfortable being verbal or with the, with the uh, potential to be vulnerable in front of other individuals, even members of the family think like the males and females of us that like to be more stoic and more self-contained and controlled, whatever that is, you know, whether you see that as an illusion or not, it's still one of those things that people really have um, definite ideas about. So one of the other things that might help people to express uh, is to maybe allow people to write things down, or this might be a some type of a a ritual that you may engage in being able to write down different types of memories having to do with some type of either trans transition um, or death or just big changes going on in your life or, you know, saying goodbye to the old you perhaps as you're rebirthing on a new path. These can be things that um, I used to think these things and I used to think this about myself but I've now grown through this, 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 and now I see all of these emerging parts of me. And so I want to thank the previous me that was, you know, either misguided or, you know, good intentioned or more adventurous than, than considerate in different times of our lives. We can mourn and grieve and say goodbye to old versions of the self in the same type of a way. And remembering things can come through many guises. We could say, yeah, I, I used to be victimized, but then that kind of carries through because that vibrational resonance sets us up for that. Um, if we can reframe and focus ourselves to not pretend it didn't happen, but to say that because I engaged in suffering, I was able to learn a lot about compassion or a lot about anger, or I was able to learn a lot about sadness and pain. Um, and, you know, you can allow those big emotions to be just black and white instead of so triggering and just say, because of that, now I have this emotional complexity, this emotional depth and compassion and awareness. And where am I going with that? What am I doing with that? And, um, so in my case, we'll be sharing some things like that. And I was going to talk about also to do with grief, two other things. Um, number one, we often in times of tribulation and tumult and chaos, we can really get distracted. It can bring us to our lowest point. It can really 
uh, shove us into completely surrendering to our faith. It can also put us into a point of questioning, doubting, a crisis of faith. And so during those times where I've kind of been right on the fence line between those two, I will say that when it was not available for me in that moment to lean on faith and to believe fully wholeheartedly in that, sometimes it was healthy for me to also say, but I'm also this logical, rational human being with this cognitive idea about that we know that energy can never be destroyed created or destroyed. And so it's perpetual. So that energy is always recycled. And so if it's the loss of a person in the physical, then we can understand that that energy is not lost. It it both carries on in our hearts and in the universe, those elemental resources, um, whether the physical or the energetic self are really, um, the building blocks of further, further things to come. And in the same way, when we're casting off and outgrowing, shedding the old skin of self, we can also see ourselves, you know, like for instance, on the yoga mat, you know, letting all of the tension and stress and whatever else you need to leave or let go of to be able to see that kind of draining downward and into the earth like water you know dripping down and cleansing and recycling and creating that real rich fertile soil to create new growth and so whenever we're releasing it's always with the awareness that as one hand releases there's something always coming in to take its space because release creates a vacuum and it's always exchanging of energies coming and going ebb and flowing and so uh the other thing besides the that those um energies don't just go away and stop existing because we are so multi-dimensional we're all at a different level of understanding and communication with those other realms, so to speak. But often, whether the universe or a person in spirit, I won't even go so far as to call them a loved one in spirit. You know, this can be people we had challenging relationships with as well, or situations, old jobs, old bosses, you know, these people kind of these energies rather can sit in our, um, in our beingness. And we need to kind of let that kind of shed and pass away. And we can frame our remembrances, not like, oh, well, you did all these bad things to me and I'll never get over it. But you did these things and, um, yeah. And then therefore, And then it's something for you to fill in the blank there with how that needs to come through. So yeah, allowing spirit to speak through you, allowing yourself to to witness those communications coming from beyond. And one of the stories I intend to share um, that I've shared on this channel before is that like my mother, um, shortly after she passed, I was in a moment uh, feeling a bit numb, a bit chaotic inside um and a hummingbird presented and stared straight at me not more than a few feet away from my face and it was the first real encounter i'd ever had with one and since that time i literally had have them all over the yard here at my new house because the flowers and things and one year last year the first sighting of the year was literally on mother's day as i was walking through my gardens and You know, some people will say, oh, well, that's a stretch. It was just a a synchronicity or a coincidence, but that's the magic. And if we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, synchronicities speak through us in in tingles, in sensations, in um, emotions, in memories, in song lyrics that pop in, you know, and your symbol language might look a little bit different. But yeah, I'm feeling like that's enough from that deck. Let's... um. Let's move along. Oh, one more thing. That this is the other thing I wanted to say just shortly about grief. 
whether it's the loss of a person, place, thing, way of being, personal identity, crisis of identity, midlife crisis, whatever it might be, creating the grief, uh, the sensation of grief in the body is often over time stored in the lungs and more broadly in the heart chakra. So all across the chest, which also includes the back. Um, and so there are other sensations that also come along with grief, such as anger. And so going through and in your meditation, you may call out each of these emotions and, and thank every emotion that arises for showing up and for being your beautiful mirror and say, uh, thank you, cleanse and clear, lift me up, you know, something like this. Um, show me what you need to show me. Tell me what you need to, to say. Um, writing it down, free writing, all of these things can come through. But the lungs in general, doing some breath work that came up yesterday um, a couple times for me, but in the reading as well. And so if several times during the day, first thing in the morning, right before bed, and then a couple more times, two, three times during the day, however many times feels right to you, you know, just taking a few moments to bring your consciousness back to the breath, back to the body, back to the present tense, and being thankful for just this body, you know, this moment. It's like, yes, this breath is also a gift, even when it's difficult. Um, yeah, there are those that are really suffering, and I definitely feel you. So let's see if we can get a little bit more information that wants to come out here about this situation for all of us. Flipping out of the deck was the birth card, number four. Uh, here we see this motherly figure with two children. This may be somebody in your family, or this may be just talking about, in general, our own rebirth process. It can be the higher self and the inner child, that inner feminine masculine walking hand in hand, like our ability to remain open, to allow love to still operate and flow through us and to us, um, and also that masculine that remembers how to maintain healthy boundaries to provide for our own selves, our own sovereign independent selves, and to protect and guard ourselves, but also to help us to feel confident and courageous enough to reach out, to ask for support, to lend support with a thoughtful comment or just merely, you know, saying, I feel you, you know, because sometimes there's nothing good to say. Um, yeah. So coming out with that, we also have number eight, Major Arcana, Archangel Raphael. He is the Archangel that has to do with, in my way of association, the heart chakra in general, the emerald, uh, is it the emerald flame? Anyways, um, this, the cup, the emotion in psychic realms. And so he represents a good amount of personal protection, healing, and surrounding us with the embrace of love and support. Underneath we have two, the Akashic Library. So yeah, there's this remembered communication. I feel like things are, are coming up for a certain reason and if they're coming up just in little spurts and bite-sized chunks throughout the day if you don't write them down will you be able to recall all of them later on and if you do record them you can look back in over the course of weeks or months and you can see that there's a pattern developing and then as your gifts are recognizing that it has a medium, a pen, paper, whatever, in order to express emotions, thoughts, feelings, impulses, then spirit starts to 
be able to tune into your freak or you rather are being able to tune into that frequency a little bit more precise, more precise, and the exchange becomes uh, stronger, more pronounced, and more easily recognizable, easy to trust and understand. And you can start to decipher those memories. But with this Akashic library, I sense that this individual or the individuals involved in whatever situation are all some part of a soul family in some type of regard, linked, connected through some type of karmic string. And so if this was something that was challenging for you, you may choose to do some type of a ritual that, and even if they were somebody quite loving and healing for you, something like a cord cutting ceremony came up recently in a discussion with myself and some friends about being able to release the emotional charge related to, let's say you're going back to your family home and that was the place where there were challenges. Uh, you can cut the energetic cord that is associated with those memories and ask that those memories be discharged and transmuted, alchemized into greater love and understanding and growth for all that ever touched that space forever, you know, across timelessness. And then going back to that place, not feeling those same exact emotions, but feeling more neutral and more in your present tense instead of walking straight into those old memories, cleansing a space, purifying a space, creating um, energetic house blessings or something like that might come in for you, whatever feels right to you. Uh, but yeah, writing down some memories and then burning them in a, in a fire safe container on a windless day would be ideal, but yeah, be safe if you're burning things out in nature. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things that you might do to help yourself to release, but the Akashic Library is talking about that karmic link, and all of these vast books are like those various neurons in the brain, and you know how they say we only use something like 10% of the brain or whatever it is? Uh, it's kind of showing me that with this. It's like we've got all of these skills, all of these memories and things that might be pretty dusty and hard to recall in the moment, but they're all still in our energy. And so if we can just kind of do some type of consciousness release and getting back into the breath and allowing things to arise and to be released, I feel like that's where we're at right now, some type of confusing situation. But it looks like there's the opportunity to gather with other individuals that whether it's like-minded or in the same energy, such as at a service for a purpose or a ritual or a gathering, a meditation even could come up like this and being able to help each other somehow to clear our karmic, Akashic uh, entanglements and to create loving healing cording in that place, if that's appropriate for that situation. I feel like we need one more here. Hope you're all doing well. This one wants to come. Okay, summer and winter. So this to me is a timing card, but it's also like something is coming, something is going, just like we talked a little bit with um, as one hand releases, another hand comes in. And it's showing me just as I say that where it used to be a popular theme in, some, in my mind as a child. I don't know if it was because it was shown in a movie or what, but there was something about, you know, as somebody is taking their last breath, a baby is born. And whether or not you feel like maybe one of your ancestors that a grandmother, grandfather type person or somebody close to you may have uh, died some time ago and suddenly now there's this new baby and or child, a young child that's kind of speaking or acting, behaving in some of those ways. Is it because they are subconsciously, semi-consciously in tune with that spiritual 
um, guidance and being influenced in those ways? Is it because some of us may believe that there's like that soul re enters into circulation, so to speak? I know other cultures believe that there's a progression where based on karma, dharma, you might come back more humble or more great than you were before based on your interactions and your awareness and your consciousness evolution journey. And so it's kind of showing me all of these different things about the continuity of the seasons, the continuity of the recycling of all of us, dust to dust, ash to ash, and um, and also how the elementals themselves can be evidence of those ancestors and spirits that are trying to guide us and guard us. Like when sometimes you'll say something in particular, have you ever seen this huge wind just gather up and start blowing out of nowhere on a windless day? And all of a sudden there's these gusts. It's like spirit being like, I heard you. And I, I know that's kind of silly and dramatic, but that's the way it sometimes feels to me. It's like, and when I, as I acknowledge and say, yes, I see you. Yes, I hear you. It doesn't need to be even spoken in my mind. I'm like, yes, in my acknowledgement and saying, yes, I hear you. I see you. I allow you to show yourself to me and to, to I allow myself to see you and to feel your presence. It's like the breath of spirit on our, on our necks, lifting and dancing in our hair, you know, teasing us in some types of ways to, you know, cast off and to let the dust and residues stagnancy to blow away and to kind of propel and push us forward on our path, perhaps, you know, and in the same way, all the other elementals are, are working through the body in every moment. Underneath the deck, we have the King of Keys and so we've got this castle in the background and it looks to me like somebody coming home, somebody who's been on a journey. And with this king of keys, keys is the earthly pentacle suit in this deck, but he's got that enormous sword and this white horse and he's got the, the armor, the crown. It's as if he's been to battle and he's coming home. And so you may find that this is something that like coming back home to your hometown or, or, you know, like any type of challenging situation. Now you kind of have to come back and some of us will see this as a relief coming home is like the place of, of rest, but others will see this as the challenge of having been maybe out doing your own thing then coming back home to this challenging, almost hornet's nest, where it's not a place of rest, but a, a place of this is the context of everything that I've had to struggle to outgrow, you know? So take those messages as you will, because it kind of fits in with this, but it's really saying that you've done a lot of work to purify yourself. You've been a heart-based warrior in this time. You've gone out, you've sought your own information, your own recovery and healing. And now you come back armed with this, this logic and discernment and good judgment. Your armor says that you're protected. You're not as thin skinned to these antics that may have been going on before, or in the same way, you know, your, your emotional upheaval is somewhat, tempering your vessel, if that makes sense. And with the crown, it's, it's really talking about that you've graduated some lesson, you have some type of spiritual mastery where you have leveled up and now you're prepared, you've been prepared and here you are ready to truly um, allow something to transition transition fully into the next phase of life and growth. So let's split this. Will, wisdom, and mind. Absolutely. You see that crown at the top? 
in that triple, is it a triceta, Celtic knot type of thing in the middle there. Uh, it's really talking about that through the application of your will with integrity and honor, justice, through harnessing not just logic and emotional resonance, you've actually trained your mind to come into greater compassion and wisdom, the higher mind that's connected with the heart-mind connection, aligned, empowered. And this it's like emperor-empress status here with that 20. You've come through profound judgments and whether or not you would identify in this way, you represent somebody who has a lot of potential for leadership in this situation. And it may be that you may be called upon uh, to guide others at this time because of the strength of your will, because of the power of your wisdom, and because of the compassion and logic and reasoning in your mind to be able to soothe or help others to cast off their old grief and invite in their own healing process. So let's see what we have here. Oh, that's way too many. Um, oh boy. I'm not even going to look because it's half the deck, but some may be upside down. Two of them did land on the desk and we'll take those ones. Oh, three of them. Okay. We have recognition, power, and celestial. So look at these two, recognition and power, and how they're bright yellow with the color of the solar plexus, which is the creative application of our will, of our authentic, empowered essence. It's bright golden yellow. Um, and mother of pearl, maybe something that... Um, what else is it called? Abalone shells. I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce that. But there's, um, you represent the sun in this situation and you bring light and enlightenment to a situation that is perhaps sad, challenging, you know, like I'm seeing somebody even like everybody's laid off or everybody's on strike or something like that and everybody's feeling negative or, you know, everybody's fallen back into something bad, like um, complaining or gossip or something else. And it's like, well, we all have these grievances. What should we do about it to help? Where can we go with this? You know, being productive, being the one who's like, okay, well, we can be upset and victimized, or we can be empowered to make change. We can recognize our options and our opportunities. We can recognize the love that is still in our hearts and um, build from that. So Celestial here is my Convergence card. You've probably heard me talk about that. It came out yesterday also. Celestial Convergence is like when multiple elements and energies occupy one space and I feel like with the magnetism that we've been experiencing in the readings lately it's talking about our ability to be empowered and to collect all this magnetic resonance by this process of will wisdom mind and allowance of the Akashic memories to come online within us and our faith in our passion and our belief our engagement with communication with other mysteries of life, we are able to create a birthing portal for this new, somebody called it the golden age yesterday in conversation with me. And that spoke to me a bit, but you know, this age of Aquarius, this heart based will and heart connected space where it's like, I have the will to be empowered and not devoured when I show my vulnerability. I am not afraid of my soft little bits because I am empowered enough to defend myself and um, to allow myself to be emotionally empowered. And also then in that way, helping others, not only by normalizing it, 
but by saying all of those right things, doing doing something here with your energy, taking leadership or being the one that just is glowing in some type of a way, you are, even if they don't understand it, energetically holding space and it's a powerful grounded nature like me as a Taurus I know that Taurus are often seen this way where you're so solid and um, warm-hearted that you are this safe harbor that when individuals are around you that glow is actually glowing on them like the sun glowing and healing and heating them up and making them feel passively in your presence secure and protected and safe. And so you're birthing this into reality in some way here. So trust that. I'm also seeing from yesterday, you glow, we beam, thanks. Let's see if we'll have time before getting cut off for an oracle card here for you. I hope that your journey today is powerfully blessed and beautiful and that you're able to make it through Nothing wants to come out. Let's take this one right here. Shared inspiration, number 20. That's the same number as we have will, wisdom in mind. Throw yourself into a new project. Be willing to let go of time constraints and rules and really be aware of whatever fulfills your heart. Gorgeous. And disengage from outcomes. Let go so you can open yourself and allow to the highest love that you deserve. Find ways to release worry or any unresolved lack of forgiveness you might be holding on to. So this could even be like breakup energy and feeling that att attachment codependency energy and being able to recognize and release and get excited about the adventures coming your way and really embracing what it is you're ready to create with the will and wisdom coming through this painful cycle out into the sun again and allowing yourself to receive and get excited about all the beauty that's ready to magnetize into your life. So take good care of yourself. Please consider hitting some of those buttons if this resonated. And if not, check out more other messages, all intended as timeless. So until next time, folks, take good care of yourselves. Big love.